There have been a series of explosions near the city of Lviv in the west of Ukraine. The country's most westerly major city has so far been seen as a place of sanctuary for many people fleeing Russian attacks further east. Well, earlier on today, a large plume of smoke was seen in the area of the international airport, around six kilometres from the city centre. Well, this is Andrei Sadovi. He's the mayor of Lviv, and he says a nearby aircraft repair facility was hit rather than the airport itself. So far, no casualties have been reported. These latest attacks come as the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has laid out his demands in exchange for what he describes as a peace deal with Ukraine. The Kremlin-backed broadcaster, meanwhile, RT, has had its licence to broadcast here in the UK revoked. And in the last few minutes, the Polish Border Guard Agency has announced that more than two million people have now crossed into Poland from Ukraine since the war began. Our first report today from our correspondent, Hal Griffith. Lost in grief and the grim reality of war. The people of Ukraine have endured over three weeks of brutal bombardment and indiscriminate deaths. These latest images show the western city of Lviv being targeted this morning, with smoke rising from an aircraft repair plant. And in the northern suburb of Kyiv, more buildings reduced to ruins by Russian airstrikes. There are no reported casualties so far. While the aerial offensive is devastating, Russia's progress on the ground seems to be stalling. According to the latest intelligence from the UK Ministry of Defence, counterattacks by Ukraine soldiers means Russia can't get supplies to its forward lines. That may be why Russia has been prepared to set out its terms for peace, demanding that Ukraine be a neutral country that would not join NATO. But it's assumed Moscow also wants eastern parts of Ukraine to be under its control and for Crimea to formally become part of Russia. These are concessions President Zelensky may find hard to make. He is prepared to meet President Putin face to face, but won't say what his terms will be. In his now daily address, he said it wasn't time to reveal the tactics for negotiating peace, sovereignty and the integrity of the state. For now, it was better to work in silence. Ukraine has had to draw on every possible reserve. Untrained teenagers fighting alongside veterans. Sergei Statovsky retired from professional tennis to take up arms for his nation. Even if I will uh, be capable of shooting, killing someone is marking you on your life. So I don't believe that any of the Ukrainians are willingly doing it, but we don't have any choice. If we don't stand up, we don't have a country to defend, we don't have a country to live in. There are some who have to flee. Around 30,000 people have been able to leave Mariupol in the south, leaving behind a siege city where 90 per cent of buildings have been damaged and destroyed. And in Odessa, they fear they may be next. Families are being torn apart as they prepare for the unknown weeks, maybe months ahead. Howell Griffith. BBC News.